Hey everybody, it's Chris. Hope you're having a great day. Today we are going to tackle the brakes on this 1855. Hydraulic actuated brakes, but they are a drive brake. Uh, introduced with the 55 series, uh, 1755 and larger. And uh, there was some changes over the time. Uh, like this line got bigger. I think that was some more time in 73. Uh, allowed the oil to return back easier in cold weather so the brakes didn't drag. Bigger tractors had three discs, brakes, and uh, but, uh, 285, 2105, 288, 2110 will be the same for the most part. The seals and stuff, um, just minor differences. So we got our brake housing here. Obviously, I've got the fender off. Um, you got narrow rows or something it'd be pretty tight in there you might be just as far ahead to take the wheel off make it a lot easier to work on seems like a lot of work to take the wheel off but in the end you'll be happier i think i've got enough room here with the fender off then i'm gonna go ahead and do it this way so uh, let's see we got the arm here this is for the parking brake connects down in there and also over oh, there's a link back in there that's hard to get to up in there so we'll get one on this end take the cotter pin out of that Got these later ones three quarter inch uh, nut on that earlier ones uh, I think it's nine sixteenths I don't remember but uh, get that stuff disconnected We'll go ahead and take this transmission lube filter off because it's been on there a long time and this tractor deserves a fresh one, if nothing else. Let's get going. Wow, a WFE filter. It has been on there a while. This is probably one of the most neglected filters on the Olivers. Amazingly enough, it's not crushed in. Looks to be all right. You have a, roughly 11 gallons of transmission fluid that all goes through this one filter. Same filter the over and under uses, hydropower uses. And it's just kind of tucked back in there where no one sees it. Kind of forget about it. And the worst thing that happens is if you get uh, water in your transmission, your gear lube, uh, there's a certain amount of additives in there that suspends that water. That's why it turns kind of milky. And you get cold weather and all that suspended water turns to slush, slushy ice crystals and the filter will plug up with those ice crystals and block off and then the oil doesn't go into the transmission where it needs to be and next thing you know the input shaft is seized up all because there was moisture in the transmission check that transmission fluid change that filter on a regular basis the oil didn't look too bad in this one it doesn't look too bad there despite the fact that and I think the last of the WFE filters were somewhere around 87 or 88. Let's see how well this line breaks free. We go look a little bit. If it's the position, oh, I can't get my line wrench back off. There it goes. Yeah, I might have to switch to an end wrench now that I got it broke free. There's only a certain spot I can get the line wrench on and off there. We'll let that drain. I was actually ahead of the game and put a bucket under there. Let's 
see if I can get this out with the camera tucked in there. Not looking too bad. Push that rod out, and that's all set. Another thing I'm surprised about, this clamp that holds the uh, hydraulic line is still here. Not that I'm complaining. Just kind of surprised. Now we're just taking off the bolts on the perimeter of the cover here. like six of them all together bolts are all off line is disconnected parking link is disconnected now it's just a matter of getting it off from there there's a stud or pin on the top and the bottom this cap right here is a cap oh look at that I guess I don't need to I was going to adjust the parking brake in farther to get it to push uh, the rest of the way off. As you saw, I re-engaged the uh, link to the parking brake and then just move the lever. It pushes the piston in to engage the brake for parking since the bolts are out and push the cover out because that was the path of least resistance. Right, here's the cover off. Dang it. All right, this outer pressure plate just comes off. Something to watch out for, you can see it, is dust. And, you know, back when these tractors were built, they used asbestos in brakes. So, there's, you might as well just figure there's asbestos dust in these. So, you know, don't just blow it out with an air gun and make dust all over. Um, the ideal thing is either shop vac, you know, wear a dust mask. Um, the other thing would be is a, uh, wet stuff down. I don't know, spray some WD-40, some brake cleaner in there. Anything that keeps the dust wet and keeps it from uh, floating around and where you can breathe it in. I think I will come over with the shop vac and get that cleaned up. They're not whipped, but they are not new either. They will be new though. There. Wow. It's been a little dust crud. Yeah. Like I say, they're not shot, but they were pretty much due for a replacement anyways. Separator disc. A little glazed and dirty, but smooth. That's the good thing. disc out of there. Ah. There's a buildup of like dust and 
A little bit of oil grime that's on the splines there, kind of making that making that disc come off a little tougher. I've had worse. I've had them where moisture has gotten in them, and the splines are all rusty. You got to just go in there and clean the splines up one at a time. Almost there. Once I get to where the outer disc was, it should go smoother because that's cleared it off. There. This is what we're really after. It looks like the inner seal is just starting to leak, seeping a little bit. And I get to see, uh, uh, of course, the inside part of this disc pad looks pretty good because it's been lubricated. But we will be changing that. Let's grab these return springs while we're at it. All right, I'm gonna wash that up with some mineral spirits. Get all that crud out of there before I pull the seal out. That way I'm not getting dirt into where it doesn't need to be. Because none of it needs to be in there, but let's make her clean. Now I've got that cleaned out pretty decent. So I guess before I go my usual way, I'm gonna try this seal remover tool. I don't know, it might be too tight of a fit. I'm supposed to be able to stick it under the seal there and pry the seal out. Or well, that's just a really tough seal. Get a spot broke open like that, which you probably can't see. I might have to tap it in with a hammer. Nice. Let's try the other side. It's Made a little progress. It's coming. By golly, it worked. Wow. And I ruined the seal, but just feeling it. It's pretty hard. It's amazing. Well, it leaking more than it was. There's a lot of heat in here when the brakes are used. Let's see, the old number is a CR28687. Uh, 
I got the Agco 3, or I'm sorry, 30-3302466. Let's see what number is on the back side of that. 4173 ASA TA. I don't think this is a Chicago Rawhide or a CR. It said made in Taiwan on the bag. The rubber is much more supple than the old stuff. I try to usually get the Agco seal because the original, I believe, is a Viton seal, and Viton's the type of rubber that's on the seal, and it can handle a lot more heat than your regular uh, Buna, Buna um, rubber that is used in most seals. So it holds up better. I'm going to clean that up a little bit and get my seal driver tool, put that in there. I'll put a little grease on the lip and a little sealing on the outside. Try to make sure that that lip goes on there, all right. Looks like that's good. And for a seal driver, just got this piece of steel pipe with a bar across the top. Because it's a little deeper than your Typical steel driver with this uh, bull pinion sticking out here. And I went and got the tape measure. Looks like that's about three and three quarter OD pipe, about a quarter inch wall. Doesn't have to be that thick. I'm sure it was something we had around. The OD is the biggest thing. So it uh, drives the seal. Hopefully I'm getting that on there. Three and three quarters. Yeah, we made it four inches long. Just plenty long on this, but the ones with the triple discs, the bull pinion's a little bit longer, so you need a little bit more. That'd be like 1950s, 1955s, 2255. Well, it sure looks right. So we're gonna say it's right. So thank you to my viewer that sent the uh, seal puller I wasn't sure it was going to work in this application, but it worked just fine. I've got the brake cover on the bench here. This cap is where you adjust the parking brake. It comes off just like a wheel cap on a wagon wheel or something like that. And you have the uh, adjustment bolt. And you'll want to be careful when you drive the piston on the other side here out. I've taken the, uh, there's an insulator plate that goes here. And if it's missing, well then you probably ought to replace it. But it pushes against this pressure plate. And it helps keep the heat from going into the piston and getting the seals hot and ruining them. But there's oil trap back there. So you want to be careful when you, oh look, you don't want to do what I do, make a mess. Right there. So I need a bucket before I make any more of a mess. Earlier versions of the cover did not have these grease zerks on it. So that might be something you want to consider doing is drilling and tapping and putting a grease zerk in these because as you can see moisture can get in there and then this brake arm can uh, hang up and make the brakes drag and cause you grief all right I got a bucket down there to catch the oil there 
There it goes. Wow, I didn't get any on me. Here's the piston. It's got this on the back. I've seen them break off there. Apparently they break off often enough that they, uh, they are available aftermarket. So this one is good. Put that in and wash it up. And then the cover here, there's an O-ring in here and an O-ring out here that seal that piston. We'll want to pick that out. Both of those out, we'll get this cleaned up. Another thing we want to do, danger of major amounts of oil coming out. I think I got most of the oil out just by being a slob. There it is. There is a hole, a little hole right up there. And it goes around to this bleeder. So we're gonna to wanna to loosen that bleeder up, make sure it works while it's out and easy to get to. Right now, everything can go in the washing tub and get cleaned up. I've washed it. And can you see it? Oh, there it is. There's the uh, bleeder screw, quarter inch deep well. Yeah. Make sure this thing breaks free all right. Blow it out. Look at that battery die on my GoPro. Basically same kind of bleeder you'd find on a car. I'll cover that up, cap it somehow or another when I paint. Don't want the hole getting full of paint and blocking it off. So I won't be able to bleed it off until I fire it up. And my intentions are to have the majority of it painted before I fire it up. Because I want to get paint in the tub and under the engine and all that stuff before I set the engine back in. I'll fire it up before I have it 100% all back together, but there will be paint on it. So that bleeder blew out good. It's ready to go. Let's flip this over and change the O-rings in it. Got the old O-rings picked out. They were a little stiff. But they hadn't been leaking, but we're replacing them anyways. Got the new inner with a smaller one which is the 709-23575 that's an agco part number for this smaller o-ring and then a 50a646 and that is the larger outer o-ring to set this down Put a little grease on them so everything slides together better. The way that's discolored right there, right where the hole for the bleeder is, I'm betting at some point in the past someone had to heat that bleeder screw up to get it to turn. It's the only reason I can come up that it's discolored right there only in that spot. I want to make sure this uh, little knob here is uh, good and polished up. There's a little rust on the outer part of this where it stuck out through the housing. Don't need that rust cutting up the o-ring as it slides through. It's in. Okay, we're back over here, ready to install stuff. Seal's already in, as you've seen. We'll go ahead and put these uh, pins back in. They kind of support things. Well, they definitely support things. All these surfaces in here need to be really smooth for the brakes to work right and not chew up your brake pads in short order. This inner one is a bit of a challenge. It's a lot of a challenge. Um, because this housing supports the bull gear inside and the differential. And to reinforce it on these larger tractors, it actually goes past the bull gear and there's a bearing support. 
inside there to help support the differential better and then there's a notch cut out of this casting that exposes the bull gear that drives or the bull pinion that drives the bull gear so the bull gear is coming in and meshing in but there's cast iron on either side of it that's part of this housing so long story short you take these bolts out and try to pull this housing out it's only going to come just a little bit of a ways and that's going to hit that bull gear and so the only way to remove this housing is to pull the axle and pull the bull gear out of the way so you can get this out so if this surface in here is really rough well that's what you're looking at if it's only a little rough or something you might just want to live with it it might chew your brake pad up a little bit and eventually it'll seat in but you're looking at a lot of work to take this housing off and take it somewhere and get it machined to get this smooth again and general i don't know if i've ever seen one that's needed it usually this side's smooth because the seal ends up leaking and the oil just kind of lets everything slide and polishes everything up if anything else if anything so hopefully you don't run into that put these return springs in those roll pins they sit on a and i does offer a brake kit i've seen it on a few websites i've even gotten one and put it in a friend's tractor and it comes with new springs comes with a seal and I do believe it comes with the o-rings for the piston um, doesn't come with the brake discs those are separate but it's actually quite reasonable um, the seal is it looks more like a general seal not the higher quality Viton but uh, it's tough to beat the price I guess if you're good with your tractor and don't leave the parking brake on or excessively use your brakes where it's gonna get hot a lot that seal will probably hold up but the the higher quality seal will hold up longer and to more heat which also leads to the let me pull this pin out this drain hole here and that's just it's exactly what it is it's even threaded a lot of people will ask uh, did something fall out of here I have no idea why they threaded it but uh, it's supposed to be open like that and then if for some reason the outer piston leaking, the oil goes down and out instead of uh, building up from ruining your brake discs and also cutting down on your braking ability. It's a safety thing. And if this seal in here leaks, it'll run down and come out there. So if you are getting a leak at this hole, uh, check it out for what kind of oil it is. If it's gear lube, it's coming from here because it's coming out of the transmission. If it's hydraulic oil, thinner, then it's from the piston because that's all filled from the hydraulic reservoir and pressurized by the hydraulic system. So it, it's gonna take the same hydraulic oil you have in the reservoir. So you can tell a lot just by that, but for no more time than it takes and the cost of a seal, if you're gonna pull it apart, personally, I just do them both and cleaning everything up good while you're in there and make it work like it should. Okay, I had, or do have, Brake discs still on the shelf from when we were a dealer. So I am putting all brand new ones back in here because, well, I've got them. And uh, one thing I did, you'll often see when you get new ones that the mold they make them in, there's like a little ledge on the outer edge there. And I take a file and grind that down. I use a hand file because power tools just kick up a lot of dust and don't need to be breathing whatever these are made out of. But file that little edge down and that lets any uh, the wear dust and stuff get thrown out if not they just fill right up with as they wear and become useless this plate obviously be pretty easy to take in and machine if it does need any uh, if it's uh, worn unevenly or not smooth wouldn't take much to take it in have someone put it on a lathe or a mill and smooth it up for you this one was in good shape I'm leaving her alone so that's just a separator plate that's where these pins come in that's those ears have got to go on the pins keeps that from turning so that the brakes do their job Another brake disc And now this is directional yeah apparently you want that side facing in 
because I can see where the springs were resting against those ears. And I might have to adjust those roll pins and they might adjust themselves. Because this outer plate, the outer disc was pretty worn on it. So now we just need to get the cover. This is that insulator disc that goes against the piston. I've got a little bit of that 3M weather strip adhesive stuff on there. Mostly just to keep it from sliding out of place while I'm trying to assemble it. And there's a little ledge it sits on, but a little wiggling and it wouldn't take it much to fall off. But you're shooting for those two pins. Then it's just a matter of get that in the right position before I get too far out of whack. There. Put in some bolts and she should be good. So I'm good enough to give her a good snug in with the line wrench. So it turns out that's a half inch stud, so three quarter inch wrench. Well, I'm not going to get lucky enough to turn that by hand. We'll find an Allen wrench. Okay, quarter inch Allen wrench. So essentially what you want to do, I'll go pull the handle, make sure everything's seated decent. So what we want is to run it in until you feel it hit, which is right about there. Yeah, it's getting tight there. You don't want it holding because you want a little gap in there because of uh, expansion contraction and all that stuff things get hot so I turn it back about a turn so it wasn't too far off and then set the jam nut and that should set your parking brake don't forget these, giving them a little bit of grease each time. Obviously, if you keep pumping, it's either gonna come out the ends or it's gonna fill this cavity up. Not terrible if this gets full of grease. I guess that's better than water and other stuff. But it's not something you have to keep uh, letting the electric grease gun go and wee, 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 wee. So now all we gotta do is knock that cap on and this side is done. Uh, other than bleeding it, which you can't do, because as I was mentioning earlier, it's uh, hydraulic brakes that run off the hydraulic pump over here. And uh, so until the tractor's running, you can't bleed them out. One side down. Now let's take this other side apart and see if it's, what kind of shape it's in. Man. Defeated by a cotter pin. Wow. That was an angry one. It doesn't look like it's going to make a mess, but famous last words. So far, so good. A little oily. I bet that inner seal's leaking just a little. Smooth there. 
smooth there. That's good. Nothing that's going to require machining by the looks. This disc is probably reusable too. Clean it up good with some mineral spirits, some brake cleaner. To get that film of oil off from there. I'm still gonna put the new ones in. I've got them, but I'll save those. I could see this one had been leaking some. It's kind of wet around here around the bottom. Not profuse, but enough to get things damp. So time for a little washing. Okay, I thought I would do this one the old way. The way I did it before I got the handy tool. Oops, left hand a bit, gotta go the right way. I'm overestimating my ability to hold a drill bit in place. Now you can use a self-trapping screw for this as well. And then you can just thread a screw in there, or if you got a dent puller or slide hammer thing like this, thread it in. <coughs> Excuse me. Thread it in. And there you go. Seal removed. Try to get these metal shavings out of there. Definitely another advantage to that newer style seal puller no drillings getting into stuff but if you don't have one don't want to go spend the money on one something as simple as a drill bit and a screw uh, grip on with a pair of vice grips then you can pry against those or something sometimes you can pry just against the screw depends on what you have for pry bars and but it doesn't have to get super expensive just to pull this one seal out. Some of the earlier versions of this brake had a little uh, adjuster thing on it. Well, I guess I'd have to look up in the book as to how to...
And there we have it. Brakes are done. As always, I appreciate everybody watching, and we'll see you in the next one.